Hey everyone, welcome back to another installment of Memories of Malta. Today I'm going to make you something a little bit different. I'm going to bake, and I'm not usually a baker. Today what we're making is a Lenten sweet. Now this is served at Lent, obviously, and tradition has it that when the 40 days of Lent would start, the women of Malta would start making these cookies. Now, like I said, I'm normally not a baker, but the ingredients look really simple, and so does the method. Also, the ingredients are full and packed full of flavor, so I'm really hoping for a really good outcome. These cookies are oblong shaped, they're kind of soft, they're covered in almonds and honey. We'll get into that later. So this cookie is called Quarazamel. I hope I said that right because I'm still learning. Quarazamel. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so I'll be right back to show you what we're going to need to make these Lenten sweets. Quarazamel. 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 Yeah, I think that's Quarazamel. Yeah. Hey kids, I'm back to show you what you're going to need to make Quarazamel. Now in this bowl here, I have sifted 200 grams of um, <clears throat> flour, just regular flour. Um, that's approximately a cup and a half plus a tablespoon and a teaspoon. So that's your base. Speaking of which, the star is almonds. You're gonna need 200 grams of um, blanched almonds and I'm gonna show you what you're gonna do with these as we get going. You're also going to require caster sugar. Now caster sugar is just super fine sugar. Do not use icing sugar because it won't work. You have to use caster sugar super fine. If you can't find super fine sugar where you live, you can um, try to blend in your blender or your food processor or your hand blender regular sugar until it's really, really super fine. We're also going to require the rind of three citrus fruits, an orange, a lemon, and a tangerine. In Maltese cooking, especially in their sweets, they use these three citrus a lot. As far as our spices go, we're going to need just a tablespoon of cocoa powder. We're going to need just a little bit of ground allspice and ground cloves. Now optional, you can use just a pinch of cinnamon as well. You're also going to need orange blossom water or orange essence. And what I have here is um, like an orange essence, an orange extract. Um, you're only going to need a teaspoon of this. So because this is not blossom water, I'm going to dilute it. Um, I don't want it to be overpowering because I do have the orange in here anyways. Um, near the end, when the cookies are done, you're going to need some honey and you're going to need more of these almonds for sprinkling. So, I'm going to put all this together and show you what we do to make Quarazamel. See you in a bit. Alright guys, so what I've gone ahead and done is I have toasted my slivered almonds. Um, just keep an eye on them because they go really, really quickly. You don't want to burn them because they will go bitter. So they're just lightly toasted. And you can smell them and you'll hear them snapping and crackling and popping and then it's time to take them off. Just keep them moving and lightly toast them. Um, it takes minutes, seconds. So with this, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to crush them up really, really fine. And I'm going to add them to all of our other ingredients. Be right back and show you how that comes together. Howdy do. I'm back, you guys. Um, what I've done is <clears throat> I've crushed the toasted almonds in this Ziploc bag um, with like you can use a rolling pin or like me a bottle of Malibu rum <laughs> and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add it to all the other ingredients in this bowl and if you remember the ingredients I have everything in here the flour the sugar the grated rind of the lemon the um, orange and the mandarin. I have the um, orange blossom water or the orange essence and of course the flour. So this is gonna be mixed. Oh and I have my spices in here as well and the cocoa. So I'm gonna mix this up fairly well and I'm gonna take a look at it. I can smell it from here. It smells so good like that citrusy and that 
cocoa and the allspice. It just really smells awesome. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue mixing this up. I'm going to get all the cocoa and everything from the bottom of this bowl. And then what I'm going to do is slowly add some water in here um, to make a dough. And the thing, the secret about making this dough is that you don't want it too soft, nor do you want it too hard. It should be a firm dough, but not like really, really hard. You got to knead it well, it says, but don't make it like a really stiff dough. So I'll be back and show you when I have everything pulled together. Stick with me, guys. I'll be right back. Whew. Okay. This is why I don't bake. <laughs> um, my dough is all kneaded. Um, it's elastic. It's not... It's pulling back, so it's nice. It's ready to go. So what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to be taking chunks out, big pieces out. And my cat wants some, too. Um, I floured the surface so it doesn't stick. Um, and what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to roll them out into like a sausage shape. And then from there, I'm going to be pressing them down about three centimeters to make like an oblong cookie. So once they're all rolled out and on my baking sheet, I'll show you what we do next. All right, stick with me. I'll be right back. Hey gang, my Quaresmel are rolled out somewhat into oblong cookie shapes. Um, I mean, they're not perfect because they're by hand. I just put it on some parchment paper with a little bit of dusting of flour. Um, the recipe called for a greased pan with flour, but these um, help you with calories. So anywhere you can get it, why not? So they're done and they're gonna be put into the oven at 375 C, um, 190 Fahrenheit, which is gas mark five in Europe. And the, the trick to these is not to overcook them. Um, a lot of people will cook them till they're crispy. You shouldn't. 15 to 20 minutes max, they should still be pliable. And um, when they're warm, I'll show you what we do to them as soon as we take them out of the oven. Pray for me. <laughs> See you in a bit, guys. Hey guys, my Quarazamel are out of the oven and they are um, still pliable. Well, you can't see that. Uh, huh. And they're really hot. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Um, they were in there for about 15 to 20 minutes, I'd say. And at this point, what you're going to do is you're going to drizzle your honey and then it with some more almonds so I'm going to continue to do the rest and I'm going to make another batch and another batch and another batch and um, I'm not going to make you guys wait I'm going to show you what these are all um, what they all look like when they're done and I'm going to taste one and hopefully fingers crossed they're going to be amazing it smells amazing and I'm actually a little surprised that it turned out they're really that easy. Okay, guys, I'll see you when we're all done to plate. All right, guys, my quarazimel are done. I've drizzled um, <clears throat> the honey and spread it on and um, then sprinkled some more um, almonds on top. You can also add pistachios if you wanted, unsalted, hazelnuts. Um, again, the choice is up to you. Um, as you can see, the cookies are pliable. They're not like crunchy and, you know, really hard. And this is how they're, mm, God, they're good. This is how they're supposed to end up. So guys, I'm really pleased how this turned out. I tasted one. Yum. Oh, you got to try this recipe. If you love like that citrusy cocoa and um, you know, spice, all spice flavor. You're going to love these. So guys, give it a go. Try it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Ciao. Oh, I know you can't be a man of a
I just wanted to come back to say the second batch always comes out better. Whoa.